Hello students. Today we're going to be learning about Lewis structures. So first we'll be starting with atomic Lewis structures, so how we draw a Lewis structure just for one single atom, and then we'll be moving on to molecular Lewis structures. Now before we get into this, what are Lewis structures? Uh, really Lewis structures are just a way in chemistry that we can represent where the valence electrons are in an atom, or when atoms are bonded together with each other, where those electrons and bonds are in a molecule. And this is a really important thing to be able to do in chemistry uh, because it helps us understand, one, why atoms bond the way that they do and how they bond. And two, it helps us to understand some of the different properties that molecules might have. One example of this that we'll be talking about a lot is the water molecule. And as you all know, water is a polar molecule, meaning it has a partial positive side and a partial negative side. All right, but uh, how do we know that? And that's really the goal over the next few lessons is to draw Lewis structures so that we can understand the properties of different molecules. So this would be a multi-step lesson. First, we need to draw individual Lewis structures for atoms and then molecular Lewis structures and then we'll use um, the electronegativities within an atom, the, the um, sorry, within a molecule, the electronegativities to determine if a molecule is polar or not. From there, we can predict some of the properties of molecules, like will they be a solid, liquid, or gas at room temperature, or uh, will will they dissolve in water? So some of the important properties that we want to know about all molecules. So in order to draw uh, Lewis structures for individual atoms. This is pretty easy. Um, the first thing that we need to be able to do is remember how to count valence electrons. So I have a periodic table here for us and you will need your periodic table out. So if you don't have that out, go ahead and get it. And let's do a quick review on drawing or uh, determining the number of valence electrons. So again, we start over here in the very first group and everybody in that group has one valence electron. Everybody in this group has two. We skip across all of these and not that they don't have valence electrons, but uh, the number of valence electrons is not always predictable for those elements. So we're not going to uh, cover those. Uh, so that we're going to jump across um, and stay in our main group elements and three, four, the nitrogen family, five, oxygen family, six, the halogen, seven, and then our famous noble gases with eight, except for remember helium has two. Now, a big part of uh, what I just told you about drawing molecular Lewis structures is understanding how atoms bond together. And as we already know, atoms bond together to fill their octet and the noble gases for the most part already have a full valence shell. So we're not going to see those in molecules a lot in our current class. Okay, now that we have reviewed valence electrons, how do we draw these Lewis structures? So the first thing we're going to do uh, and, and on your sheet, you'll see an example of fluorine and what that looks like. Remember, the whole point of this is to show where are the valence electrons, how many are there, um, and where are they at. And we don't really care about the rest of the electrons. And you might already know why, because those electrons that are in the lower energy levels um, on the interior and they're not on the outside, those electrons aren't going to be involved in bonding very often. It's always the valence electrons that are being shared or transferred uh, in the bonding process. Okay, so let's go ahead and start off. First step, whenever you want to draw a Lewis structure for just one atom, uh, we are going to find the symbol for that atom and write it. So fluorine is right here, and it has a symbol of F. We're going to draw that. Now, uh, we're going to place we're going to figure out how many valence electrons does fluorine have. And we know that it's in the second to the last group. And so it has seven valence electrons. And I want to represent all those valence electrons around fluorine. Uh, when we draw those electrons around, uh, there's some important rules that we need to follow. So the first thing is, uh, whenever we place these, we're going to pretend like there are seats or like, like seats around this atom right here. And the electrons can only be in the seats. And each seat can only hold two electrons max. All right. So we can't put more than two electrons on one side when we're drawing a Lewis structure. Now, 
if you're thinking about that again, what's the maximum number of valence electrons that atoms can have? It's eight, and we have two, four, six, eight spots, right? for those uh, electrons. So we've got space to show all eight if there are, and if they're not, we're gonna have some empty spaces. So we're gonna come in here, and um, it doesn't matter where you start, but we're gonna count up to seven valence electrons, placing them in these seats. So one, two, three, four. Now I've placed four, I still have three left to place. Uh, now I'm gonna have to start pairing those electrons up. And so we'll keep going around here, right? Five, six, seven. And so whenever we actually clean this up a little bit, and I apologize because I'm drawing with my finger on my screen, when we clean this up a little bit, our Lewis structure is going to look like this. Okay. Now, real quick, why why do we uh, place the electrons as individuals and then pair them up later? Remember, electrons have a negative charge, uh, and so they don't really want to be next to each other unless they have to. Uh, and a good analogy for this is if you were to get on a bus of people, and the bus wasn't full, so there were some empty seats on the bus, but there were also some individual people sitting in some of the seats as well. Um, unless you knew those people, let's assume you don't because you're getting on like a city bus, you're not going to go sit in next in a seat that already has a person in it. That would be socially awkward. Uh, and we would most likely, most people <laughs> following social norms would go sit in an empty seat by yourself. This is how electrons behave. If there's an empty seat available, they're going to want to take that seat. Uh, and if we only put them uh, next to other electrons, if we have to, and again, that all has to do with their charge. Okay, so this is a good Lewis structure for fluorine, but I will show you, um, it doesn't matter, like I said, where we put these uh, pairs of electrons and where the unpaired one is. So any of these examples would be a fine Lewis structure because they represent the electrons correctly. Now there's another concept that I want to make sure that we understand, and that's paired versus unpaired electrons. So we're going to be talking about that a lot as we draw these Lewis structures. So if I come here to my molecule, uh, anytime a seat is full, so right here I have a full seat, right? The both There's <laughs> two electrons in that seat, same with this one and same with this one. We call these paired electrons. All right, sorry, I'm abbreviating here. Those are P -A -I -R -E, paired electrons, okay? So whenever we refer to paired electrons, that means that that pair is in a seat together um, on one side of the atom. And then whenever we have an individual electron, we call this an unpaired, oh boy, unpaired electron. All right, uh, so make sure you understand that term and you'll notice on your sheet, there's a place where it's asking you to indicate like uh, how many paired electrons are there and how many unpaired. That's gonna be really important when we get to our molecular Lewis structures, which is coming up soon. So let's take a couple, a look at a couple of these um, and I'll, I'll just explain a, a few more rules or give you some examples. The next one on our sheet is aluminum. So I'm gonna find aluminum and look real quick and determine how many valence electrons aluminum has as an atom. Remember, uh, we're also assuming here that all of these atoms are neutral. They haven't gained or lost electrons. So that's just an assumption that we're making when we discuss how many valence electrons they have. So if you said three, you are correct. Uh, so I'm gonna, again, you don't have to draw these lines like I'm doing it. I just want to give you uh, the, the foundation here for moving forward. So um, we're gonna go ahead and now add our three valence electrons. And again, it doesn't matter which seat I start with, um, they're all open. And so I'm gonna start here, one, two, three. Missed it, three. So that's a good, uh, that's a good Lewis structure for aluminum and to clean that up, it's gonna look something like this. Right? And again, um, any structure that has three unpaired electrons is a good Lewis structure for aluminum. This would be an incorrect Lewis structure 
if I came in here and didn't follow electron social rules, and I for some reason put two electrons together in a seat and one here, that is not a good Lewis structure because we have empty seats available to put one of these two electrons in so that they are not paired up. Okay, so again, if there's empty seats, fill those with single electrons before you start pairing them up. Super important rule. All right, let's move a little faster here and do a couple more. Okay, so phosphorus is next. So we're going to find phosphorus, which is P on our periodic table, and valence electrons is five. All right, so let's start putting those around one, two, three, four. And now that I've got all the seats with one electron, I can put that last electron anywhere I want. Okay, but I'm going to have to have it share with another uh, electron. So now for this one, this is a good Lewis structure. Again, that pair that's on top here could be um, on any side. That doesn't matter. But uh, if we're de determining how many paired electrons do we have and how many unpaired, we have one pair. Okay, and we have one, two, three unpaired. I'm just going to abbreviate here. Uh, really, the pair doesn't matter a whole lot because once uh, electrons are paired up, that seat's full and we can't do any bonding when we get to molecular Lewis structures. But the unpaired is really important because it's going to tell us how many places does that atom have to share electrons whenever it comes together in a covalent bond with other nonmetals. Okay, all right. Uh, let's go one more here. <laughs> Keep doing this. <laughs> Learning to use my whiteboard. Um, let's jump over to sulfur. So you guys can do iodine pretty quick. Let's do sulfur together. So here's sulfur, S. It has six valence electrons. And when we go put those around, one, two, three, four. And I have two more. So I'm going to put those somewhere paired up. So in this uh, in this Lewis structure, I have two unpaired electrons on sulfur and two paired electrons. Uh, and, and when I say two paired, I mean two pairs, okay? Again, it doesn't really matter if you're saying there's four that are paired or there's two pairs. Um, it's like saying there's two pairs of shoes or there's four shoes. Again, that doesn't matter as much as being able to determine how many unpaired electrons there are because that's more important. Uh, again, this would not be a correct Lewis structure for sulfur. And you can probably tell me why, right? We have an empty seat over here and I have pairs that could be split up. So I'm going to move one of those paired electrons into the empty seat. And so this is a good Lewis structure for sulfur. Okay. Um, last one. Not a tricky one, but uh, it is one that we should just briefly talk about. Neon. Neon is a noble gas, meaning it has a full outer shell of eight valence electrons. So when we put our electrons around neon, one, two, three, four, five six, seven, eight, all right? That's showing us that neon's full. It has empty places where it can bond with other elements. It's not going to want to share electrons with any other elements. It's not going to want to transfer electrons because it is stable and full, and that's why it's a noble gas because it doesn't really change very often, okay? All right, uh, that is the Pretty short lesson there on drawing um, atomic Lewis structures. Um, so once you've got that down, we can move on to molecular Lewis structures, which we'll get into next. Have a great day and Skull Ridge.